are you saying that Neil Peart is the only drummer that matters and that he's the best drummer ever in the whole wide world and forever? <laughs> All right, guys, I got a little beef to talk about, a little rant, um, kind of off the cuff. I'm going to try not to edit this too much, um, but I, I won't be able to resist. I'll be editing a little bit. I recently did a video about Neil Peart's creative moments, like top 10 creative drum parts, and it's been received positively. Uh, I'll have a link up there in the cards above uh, to that video. Um, but again, anytime people talk about how great Neil Peart was, there will always be a group of people that put him down. And they say, I like Neil Peart. You know, he's a great guy, but he's just a mediocre drummer. He, you know, wasn't as fast and he wasn't as technical. And they'll come up with all these drummers that are like really fast and really technical and how these drummers are way better than him. They can run circles around him, this and that and the other thing. And I think people who have that opinion just missed my point entirely, completely. I'll reiterate again. There's no such thing as the best drummer in the world. There's no su such thing as the best drummer of all time. I don't care how many times you say, you say it. I don't care how you explain it. It's impossible. And the reason that it's impossible is because we're human beings. Everybody is different. There's something that a human being is better at than someone else. No matter how good you are, someone else can do it better, whatever that is. And this amalgamation of different talents and skills and and practice routines, you know, makes you the drummer you are or, you know, or the drummer that we admire. Some drummers focus on speed. Some drummers focus on rudiments. Some drummers focus on creativity. Some drummers focus on just a simple 4-4 beat. At the same time, there are many things that other people, fans, uh, other drummers, um, there are things that they value more than other things. One person who thinks that the best drummer has these qualities, well, another person will have another set of criteria or opinions as to why they think this drummer is better. And guess what? They're both right, because those are opinions. Now, you know, the bashing of Neil Peart, I don't think it's warranted. There are many, 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 many drummers, professional drummers, other legendary drummers, who love Neil Peart, and there are others in that category that, you know, laud how great he was. So what is it that these people who don't like Neil Peart, what do they know that these other drummers who love Neil and who love the drummer that he was, what, they don't know things that maybe these amateurs or fans, um, you know, they know something that other people don't? I, I don't get it. But you know what? That's all okay. I mean, if you don't think Neil Peart is a great drummer, that's OK. You can think that uh, I don't agree with you and I don't have to agree with you, but I think he was a legendary drummer. And the other thing that these people with these opinions tend to do uh, is they tend to put down other people that think Neil Peart was a great drummer. Um, they'll list, you know, they'll just start criticizing him. Um, you know, if you're if you're 14 years old, yeah, Neil Peart is a great drummer. But then, you know, when you learn more, he's not that great. If that floats your boat, if that makes you feel better to put others down and put others opinions down, that's fine. You can do that, too. I don't care. I'm going to like who I like. And actually, I'm going to do a bunch of videos showing all of the reasons why I think this way. And if you think a certain way about why your drummer, your favorite drummer is, is you put out a video and you explain why you think they're the best or why you like them so much. And I would love to watch those videos and I'm going to be sure that I'll find something in any of those videos that Neil Peart couldn't do, but that's not the point. I think each person has their own criteria as to what they think makes a great drummer. And they're all, you're all right. Everybody's correct because their opinions, it's, you know, ultimately I believe it's how it makes you feel. I came to this realization and epiphany not too long ago where I used to think that Rush songs were better pretty much than any other type of music. <laughs> so ignorant. Then I, I discovered, well, you know, songs are about how they move people. You know, there are a lot, a lot of great songs. There are a lot of great songs that are better than any Rush song. 
because they move so many people. And Rush fans are a particular type of fans about a particular type of music. But I think Rush fans do appreciate all kinds of music. And because of that, they can see how prolific the members of Rush were. And that that lends them to appreciate other complex music or even other simple music that moves the heart, moves the emotions. And I think ultimately that's what it's all about is how does the music move you? In the case of Rush, their music moved me. The, the level of musicianship moved me. And that's why I love the band so much. And anybody can use whatever criteria they want to like what they like, think this is better than that. It's all fine. But the last thing I want to do and to not end the video yet, but, you know, thing I want to point out is Rush fans don't just like Rush. <laughs> we like a bunch of different types of music. And in my case, from a drummer's perspective, I love a ton of different drummers. And what I decided to do is just to show these people, not that I have to, but, you know, for entertainment's sake, just uh, a chat between you and I. Uh, let's I wanted to show these people that I don't just like Neil Peart. I don't think that he's the only gig in town. There are a bunch of drummers that are great. And I'm going to give you my top 10, my top 10 favorite drummers of all time or uh, top 10 drummers that have moved me emotionally in a certain way that would make me love them so much. And I don't think you could peg any one of these as the greatest drummer of all time. However, all of them encompass all great things about drummers, you know, creativity, speed, technicality, rudiment specialists, all of that stuff. You know, ultimately, we kind of appreciate in the end the same things about drummers. So what I'm going to do, not necessarily in chronological order, but just I think from 10 to 1, the drummers that in my whole life, since I was a child to now, I would consider my top 10. And the way I came up with this list, without thinking, just by feel, I just listed the first 10 drummers that came to my mind that affected me over my life as far as my attitude towards drumming. I have a feeling that I may have left out some drummers that may maybe should have been in this top 10, but I went by emotion and feel alone. These were the first 10 drummers that came to my mind when I decided who are the top 10 drummers that have affected me musically in my life. And maybe you can do the same thing too. You can, without thinking about it, just write down 10 drummers or 10 guitarists or 10 bass players that you like and see what that tells you about how you feel about these mus musicians. So here are my top 10 favorite drummers of all time, starting with number 10. The drummer that I came up with at the 10 spot is Bun E. Carlos of Cheap Trick. I don't think many people would, I don't know, maybe they are. I would think there are a lot of people that like Bun E. Carlos uh, as a drummer. When I was a kid, we're talking, I was like nine years old. Cheap Trick at Budokan came out in 1979. I mean, I think their performance was in 78, but it was released to the U.S. in 79. That was the first time that, or the first drummer that made me want to play the drums or like them in a way. I like the drums already, but Bunny Carlos was the first drummer that made me want to play the drums. What I did as a little boy, I set up a bunch of pillows on my bed and I put on Cheap Trick at Budokan and I actually had a couple of drumsticks. I don't know how I got them, uh, but I pillow drummed the whole concert. So much fun. Uh, I'll never forget. It was it was just a blast. Even my older brother was like, man, you did a good job with that. And I was like, yeah, thanks. So excited. The drumming on on Cheap Trick at Budokan is fantastic. So much fun. Just a blast to play. I haven't had a chance to play any of these songs, the songs on, on there with with a band. But any of the songs on that live show would be fun to play. But Bun E. Carlos, for me, was the first drummer that made me want to play the drums. So he is my number 10 favorite drummer. My number nine uh, in my top 10 favorite drummers is Peter Chris of Kiss. Now, Peter Chris holds a special place in my heart. He was the first drummer I ever noticed, period. Like we're talking like mid 70s. I was a really young lad. And my older brother, you know, he was old enough to appreciate a lot of rock music at the time. He liked Aerosmith, uh, some others. I don't remember. But he um, got me into Kiss. We had Kiss Alive 1 and the records that came before that. And I was hooked. I mean, I was addicted 
to kiss as a little boy. And we were four boys and each of us was a member of the band. And um, that was pretty funny. I was so convinced as a boy that Peter Chris was the best drummer in the world. And coincidentally, I had a cousin whose husband was a drummer in the army and he was much older than I was. He, he would talk to me and he would tell me, no, Buddy Rich is, is a much better drummer than Peter Chris. And I'd be like, no, no, he's not the best drummer. Uh, Peter Chris has won all these awards. And I would show him pictures of these supposed awards that Peter Chris got as a drummer. Maybe he got some, I don't know. But I don't think it was because of his technical prowess because he didn't have that. But I was convinced that Peter Chris was the best drummer in the world. He was the, the first drummer I noticed ever. And, you know, with the how spectacular Kiss was, live there weren't really many videos that i would see at the time whatever was on tv if they ever were on tv you know which wasn't very often but the records kiss alive one and then kiss alive two that stuff was just so addicting to me the thing about peter chris i think in later years uh, especially paul stanley had a lot of criticism about his way of playing and that it wasn't that good i thought peter chris was the perfect drummer for kiss in the 70s an example of that is the song she when they played that live, it was off the Dress to Kill record, I believe in 75, that was the release of that record. But when they played that song live, Peter Chris was an absolute beast on that song. He was he was a good drummer for them, a really good drummer for them in the 70s for, one, for what they needed. So my number nine all-time favorite drummer, Peter Chris. My number eight all-time favorite drummer, Thomas Lang. He was the first drummer that I noticed that had dizzying speed. I, when the first time I saw him, I had never seen or heard anything like that. Even to this day, he's one of the most technical drummers I've ever seen. One of the fastest drummers I've ever seen. And the, his ease of movement around the kit, just playing incredibly fast, now, not only with his hands, but with his feet, he awakened in me the idea of how fast a human could play the drums. So, so fast, so incredibly fast. And just, how easy he made it look he how easy he makes it look i mean he's still to this day uh, he auditioned to be the drummer of dream theater when mike portnoy left the band for the first time uh well the only time he left the band he's back but when he left the band he was one of the seven drummers that auditioned great aud i mean he would have fit in but yeah thomas lang just o awakened you know m exposed me to the human potential of speed and flexibility and movement around the drum kit. Absolutely mesmerizing. Thomas Lang, my number eight of all time. Number seven, my num in my top 10 of most influential drummers to me of all time is Walfredo Reyes Jr. This is a very interesting uh, drummer. I actually saw him in a drum clinic with my son. I'll have a picture or two here of that clinic. He's the Getty Lee of drummers. I mean, he would have he has his regular drum kit in front of him and to his left, he would have percussion instruments, you know, the timbales and cowbells and congos, bongos, whatever, a bunch of stuff to his left. And he'd be playing the drum kit. You hear a drum kit playing and you also with his left hand, he'd be doing the percussion percussion instruments. I was floored. I mean, if I, I still say to this day, when I grow up, I want to be Walfredo Reyes Jr., that's the type of drummer I would really like to be. A drummer that could play the drum kit and play percussion at the same time. You know, it'd be like playing for like an artist like Carlos Santana or something like that, where they, you know, they have percussion and they have, you know, a regular drum kit as well. This drummer could actually do both of those things. Unbelievable. I had never seen anything like that. I was completely floored. It's basically having like two brains. You're playing the drum set and with the other side of you, you're playing the, you're playing percussion and it, it sounds like two or three people like we say about Getty and the boys, but, um, it's just him. I aspire to play, uh, drums like that being a multi drummer slash percussionist pretty much at the same time. So while Fredo Reyes jr. Number seven. Number six, some of the top 10 most influential favorite drummers of all time, Phil Collins of Genesis. The Genesis that I knew growing up was the one from the 80s forward with the hits, that Genesis. So as far as music, musicality, I think Abacab was like, you know, I thought that was really cool. But 
they weren't really my cup of tea. I was into Rush. Little did I know that there was a 70s version of Genesis, late 60s, but well, I'll say the 70s, that, wow, Phil Collins, <laughs> he's one of the best drummers. There's a, there's a legendary drummer, one of the best drummers ever. That guy could play anything. My favorite period of Genesis is when the guitarist Steve Hackett was in the band. So, you know, Nursery Crime, all the way up to Wind and Wuthering. Um, those records, when Steve Hackett was in the band, that's my favorite era of Genesis. But I'm telling you, Phil Collins, really tasty drumming, really creative, and he made it look so easy. And then when you see him playing live, he's like chewing gum and doing these really complicated drum drumming fills and patterns that fit the progressive nature of the band at the time. Uh, later, they were more, as we know, more pop-like. But in the 70s, you know, that was one of the best. They are one of the progressive, best progressive bands of all. And the 70s version of Genesis shows that. But Phil Collins, when I got to know that side of Genesis, the 70s side, the first song that I heard from them from that era was the, the Fountain of Salmasis, which is off the, off the Nursery Crime record. Got to hear that song. I mean, if you haven't heard the 70s versions of Genesis, you got to get into that. Fantastic, fantastic music, fantastic drumming. Phil Collins, deservedly in my top 10 at number six. My number five in my top 10 favorite drummers of all time, Alex Van Halen. I discovered them in the early 80s. He was he's such a hard hitting rock drummer. I have a lot of respect for, you know, the big drumsticks he used and just the bombastic way he played the drums he had uh he was using the double bass drums you know really early in his career as well even in the debut record in 78 uh, all the way forward i mean the guy was an animal on the drums really the record that re i really well, i mean he was always a great drummer but i mean quintessential rock drummer but the record 1984 what a performance i mean that's one of the best to me one of the best drumming records of all and the song girl gone bad on 1984, my favorite Van Halen song, and actually in the record prior, Diver Down, the song Hang Em High is my second favorite Van Halen song. Just great, great drumming songs, really great drumming songs. I actually did a cover of Girl Gone Bad uh, in my other channel on YouTube. But in any case, Alex Van Halen was a really huge influence on me growing up as far as what, the, what a real heavy hitting rock drummer looks and sounds like. Alex Van Halen is my at my number five number four greatest drummer on my list is marco miniman this is a very interesting drummer i also saw him at a drum clinic several years ago really friendly guy i got to take a picture with him i bought his cd at the time he had an intermission and i caught him in the middle in the hallway and i asked him a few questions he answered them for me Really, really friendly guy. He, to me, is the modern day Neil Peart. Like right now, he's currently my favorite drummer. Currently. Neil Peart's not here, so I got to pick someone else. He is that good. And he's currently in a band uh, called The Aristocrats. And it's a three piece. They're just instrumental. I mean, that music, those musicians are sensational. I got to say, one of the greatest guitarists in the world is in that band right now. Guthrie, I think is his last name. The bass player, too. I don't remember his name right now. Sensational bass player. And Marco Miniman. He's done projects with Alex Lifeson, by the way. In any case, his playing is he's incredibly fast. He's incredibly powerful. It's really hard. Incredibly creative. He just, he reminds me of if Neil Peart was born later in life and he was in his 40s or 50s now, he'd be this type of drummer. He'd be like Marco Miniman is now. Um, I think drummers tend to you know, they'll have their own way of playing, but it's kind of like you're a product of the time you're born in. And I think many drummers today are much faster than drummers prior in prior decades. Uh, I think if Neil was a drummer today, he'd be like Marco Miniman, Marco Miniman is. And actually, if we're talking about Neil Peart, I think his fastest drumming was in 1982 during the Signals tour. I've seen some videos during that time that Neil was not only very fast, but very strong. He reminds me of Marco, Marco Miniman right now. So uh, great drummer, one of the best in the world right now. Check him out. He is at my number four all time favorite drummer, 
Number three, um, I had a really hard time with number three and number two. I, I flip flopped them quite a bit, but I'm going to say my number three drummer, uh, uh, favorite drummer of all time, my top 10, Steve Smith. Steve, Steve Smith, known more because of his being in Journey, the band Journey. Uh, he's also in a more jazzier group, Vital Information, and he's done a bunch of other stuff. Man, that guy can play anything. I mean, he's a rock drummer, incredible rock drummer incredible jazz drummer you just learn a lot just by watching him i think his use of the traditional grip is almost unmatched just really good <laughs> of course he plays match grip but not as often i love his use of the lower toms of the floor toms um, if you hear many of the songs that he's done with journey and you know in general you see him play in his solos you know a lot of drummers tend to play more towards the higher toms for some reason then they're not really busy in the lower toms just to fill in the bottom but he does he incorporates his whole kit kind of like neil did steve was is that kind of drummer i think he is a very creative drummer in the way that neil was he used every part of his kit really efficiently really creatively and with a lot of nuance you know he played softly and he played with power as well and even to this day i mean he's still a magnificent drummer even in his older age. My first concert that I ever saw was Journey, 1982, the Frontiers Tour. Steve Smith on the drums, incredible solo. So he was the first drummer I saw. Actually, no, he was not the first drummer I saw live. The opening act was Brian Adams, whoever the drummer was for Brian Adams that day or that night. That was the first drummer I saw live, but I don't remember who that was. I'm going to say Steve, Steve Smith was the first drummer I, I remember seeing live. Anyway, incredible drummer. Yeah, he's in my top 10 of all time. So Steve Smith, number three. My number two in my top 10 favorite drummers of all time is Alan White of Yes, the late Alan White. Unfortunately, we lost him a couple of years ago. I think he might be the most underrated rock drummer of all time. I don't think it is appreciated, his impact he had on the band Yes. I actually did a tribute to him after he died. I put a card up above I was so impacted by his method of drumming. I fortunately got to see him live during the Big Generator tour. And in fact, that was a week after I saw Rush for the first time. This was in December 1987. Best two weeks of music ever in my life. I saw Rush for the first time. A week later, I saw Yes for the first time. That was awesome. So I saw Neil Peart. Then I got to see Alan White live in the 70s. We're talking the 70s, 70s Alan White. He was an absolute beast. If you hear any of the records during the 70s, but I think his highlights are songs like Sound Chaser on the Relayer album. Also, the live version of The Gates of Delirium, which is also on the Relayer album, but the live version on Yes Shows, not Yes Songs. Yes Songs is a live compilation of Yes Songs in the early 70s. This is later in the 70s, Yes Shows, The Gates of Delirium, and uh, not only The Gates of Delirium, Ritual uh, from Tales from Topographic Oceans, also on Yes Shows. Those live, that, that drumming by Alan. Actually, that whole Yes Shows <laughs> performance of uh, Alan Drum. I'm telling you, he he's underappreciated. He played with so much power. He had finesse and he was very creative as well. The, his drumming was such a great foundation for the members of Yes. I think that Bill Bruford, not in my top 10, but I love Bill Bruford as a drummer. I think he's kind of like a virtuoso per musician as the other four are in the band and kind of each one had to like fit themselves in what they were the songs that they were creating but to me alan white was more like i'll just i'll sit down here in the bottom you other four do whatever you want i got you at the bottom i got you in the rhythm and whenever he and he understood all the time signatures even though he was a, a rock drummer he played for john lennon before that and other things that he did basically as a rock drummer but for yes he had to understand all the time signature changes he had to understand the nuances of of these virtuoso musicians that he was playing with rick wakeman on keyboards steve howe on guitar chris squire on bass john anderson a uh, great singer and, and composer songwriter i mean i don't think he was at that level musically but drum wise he was exactly what that band needed to me and he just Look up anything live during the 70s that Yes did, and you'll see how great a great timekeeper and all the power you needed, all the finesse you needed. Alan White, for sure, deserves my number two spot 
in my top 10 drummers of all time. And there we go. Those are my top 10 drummers of all time. As you can see, within those drummers, everything that every other fan of drumming likes is in my top 10 list. It's covered. You know, speed, dexterity, creativity, flexibility, rudiments, everything that drummers love, my list covers it. So it's okay to like any drummer as your favorite drummer. Just don't expect everybody to agree with you that they're the best drummer. You may think that, you know, your favorite drummer is the best. That doesn't necessarily mean they are, but it's fun to talk about. So if you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it already. And oh yeah, you know what? I haven't spoken about my number one favorite drummer of all time. I did 10 through two, but I didn't talk about my number one. You know what? Just go to the playlist at the end of this video. I'll talk to you about it then.